August 2008, my parents and me traveled 5,000 miles from Calcutta to London, primarily to see Norman Foster's Swiss rebuilding. I was 13 years old that time, and I was so fascinated by the fact that my parents were so fascinated with the building, and they're both architects. When we landed in London, we stayed at this place called Ibis Hotel because it was the closest to the building. Luckily, on the morning that we set out for this treasure hunt, Thank God it was not raining. And it was literally a treasure hunt. It was like peekaboo. Once you could see the tip, once you could see the side, once it appeared, once it disappeared, it was marvelous. Until finally, we were there. It's alright. I'm all This is not really. Cucumber, cucumber building. Gherkin. Cucumber. Cucumber? It's a cucumber. Made by who's the architect? Who's, an, who's the architect? I'm going to Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know, I know, I know who the architect is. Amita Bachchan. Sir Norman Foster. No, Greatest it's Amita Bachchan. What were my thoughts on it? Was it all that great like my parents made it out to be? Honestly, as a 13 year old, I was slightly disappointed. First of all, the design didn't seem anything great to me. It was like a simple elongated egg type. Secondly, the entire process of arriving at the building was really undramatic. It's not like the other buildings where you have a sense of approach to some sort of greatness, but this building had nothing of that. This one, you can tell why? The link. But that was then. I was 13. Today, five years later, when I know slightly more about architecture and I can understand the subtleties of design slightly more, I look at that building and I say, wow. The advantages of this shape are many. Because it tapers at the bottom, it creates more ground space. And then tapering at the top also, it reduces wind resistance. All that simplicity that I told you before, now I understand how much complexity went into creating a form that simple. The drainage detail, you know, best thing here, everything is sloping out. And that lack of drama. Now I think it's the exact point that helps the building integrate so well with its surroundings. So is it the design? Or is it the technology? Or simply the Norman Foster brand name? I've been trying to figure out what is it that makes the Swiss Re building so remarkable. If you take a look at the buildings surrounding the Swiss Re, they're all rectangles or squares, all hard geometrical figures. Now what Norman Foster did with the Swiss Re, he gave it a curved conical shape that made the building distinctly stand out. Another point determining the shape of the tower was to allow the smooth flow of wind around the building. Had it been a solid block like this, the flow of air would have been obstructed. But the Swiss Re tower, because of its curved shape, allows for the smooth circulation of air around the building. The basic plan of the building is based on two circles. One is the inner circle and one is the outer circle. This inner circle is the core of the building or the guts. That's where all the circulation, service and storage has been placed. And this is the outer circle where the structural members are located. But here's the beauty of the plan. Each floor rotates 5 degrees from the floor below it. And each of these floors have these punches. Now if these flows were stacked one above the other, we'd have a simple straightforward atrium. Now because each of these flows are rotated by 5 degrees, we have a beautiful curved atrium. So what this does is number one, it allows for wonderful passage of air and two, it creates beautiful sight lines and interconnections between the flows. You can see what I'm talking about here. And the atriums are even reflected in the glass design. Now for the famous diagonal grid, or as it's known as the tire grid. The entire exterior glazing rests on these. And the beauty of the glazing 
is that even though the entire building is a curved surface area, there's only one piece of curved glass and that's right on the tip of the building. Another interesting thing about the building is that the floor to ceiling height is 2.75 meters. So, if the tallest man were to walk into this building, he'd have just 3 centimeters clearance above his head. Oh, and I almost forgot. Parking, parking, parking. And when I went there, there was none. Turns out, there's only one level of minimum parking in the basement. And in fact, they've provided four times the mandatory space for bicycle parking. Now that's an environmental strategy. You know, to reduce traffic and pollution within the region. So what do I think about this history building? Is it really that great? You know, it reminds me of an old Mark Twain joke. Mark Twain said that when he was 15, he thought his father was a complete dodo. But when he was 30, he was astounded to see how much his father had grown in the last few years. So I guess that's my take on Swiss Re. The more you learn about it, the more you know about it, the better it seems. And I hope this little video of mine will help you in understanding this building a little bit more. Please let me know what you think about the video and please put your comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Bye. I'm on Moon.